Hey, you guys, welcome back to this awesome channel. Today, we have an epic, incredible guest for you guys. We have Bobby Smith on. He's a return guest. He is so inspiring. He's been on the channel before. I believe he's lost about 127 pounds through eating raw food only, specifically fruit. And he inspired me because he did an Instagram post recently showing someone taking a picture of him at the liquor store in the morning because that used to be his old routine, drinking, eating standard American diet food. And he has totally changed his life. And not only that, he's stuck to it. He's inspiring. He's following his passion, his purpose. He's made that his life. And he's just literally one of the most inspiring people I know. So let's get into it. Hey, Bobby, thanks for coming back on. How's it going? Thank you. Thank you, Jelly. And I appreciate it. What a wonderful introduction. Um, I feel good. I'm glad to be back on. Glad to, uh, you know, continue to tell my story. Yeah, no, you're awesome. You're a light in this world. And so how much, not like everything's weight at all, because it's not, it's more like mm -hmm. everything on the inside to me, but how much weight total did you lose from before to now? 146 pounds. 146 wow. pounds. Yeah. Over it's been two years now since I started my journey. So that's collectively over the two years, 146 pounds. That's so insane. And how do you feel now versus then? Like happiness, energy. Did you feel a lot different waking up in the morning before with that extra weight versus now? It's like it's not even comparable. It's not comparable. That's why. Like, that's one of the biggest things I explain getting up in the AM, getting up in the morning. Like, it's not comparable. I get up out of bed like a spring chicken, like literally like sometimes I get up and it feel like I haven't even been asleep. You know wow. what I'm saying? So yeah. it's a big difference. And with the mindset, I was getting up. I was in a drunken state all the time getting up. So getting up, I was always feeling like the world was weighing down on me every single day. So. It's a complete difference. Yeah, this is crazy. So I want to start with this because your post, like I was saying in the beginning, was so inspiring. I think you said like someone, you didn't know they were taking a picture of you. You're at the liquor store, I think in the morning. You used to start drinking in the morning, right? That's like another level. Oh, yeah. So what led you to like that type of extreme bad habit, like drinking to that level? You know, I know like I used to drink party in the evenings, but it was never like through the day like that. So what led you to that? And how did you get over all that? Okay, so my drinking started back when I was like 18, 19 years old. So I'm currently 38. So mm -hmm. when I started drinking, I got into it. I started drinking heavy right away. So the pattern was developed from just consistent drinking. So it got to the point when you see when that when like my uh, baby mom took that picture, my son's mom took that picture and she used to do that because I, she used to say, you need to see yourself. But she would never show me. But cause like she was like always forget to show me it was always happening. So when that when she snapped that picture, that was every single day of my life. Wow. Every single day I was what I would do is I would get off of work at seven in the morning and I would go to the liquor store open at nine in the morning. So I'll be the first one in the liquor store. They knew me in there every day. You know, I would be in there multiple times a day and. That was just my life, the consistency. That's why I, I pride myself on consistency in this life yeah. because that's what I was consistent in in that life. So it was every single day routinely. I was miserable. I was like, I was like, you never heard like the, uh, the most ridiculous alcoholic in your family. I was that person. Like mm -hmm. I was the worst alcoholic in the family and everybody knew it. So how I overcame it though was, that's that's why I started this journey. That's why I started this because of alcoholism. And it was like I knew what to do to get out of it because of previous things that I've done. But to that, that was the main reason why I started my entire journey to stop drinking alcohol. Wow. And mm -hmm. like, OK, I used to drink a lot, too. Life is so much better without it, though. Right. Because I know some people might be watching and they might think like, I can't imagine my life without it. Life would suck without it. Like, do you ever miss it? And are you happier now that you gave it up? <laughs> I'll never miss it. That that never miss it. So let me tell you, like I tell people all the time, I I was that same person. I was that person who never ever saw myself not drinking. Even the people around me say, I never thought you would stop drinking. So what it is is you don't know how you're living until you step outside of it. So I meet people all the time who struggling with alcoholism. And the reason why they like it is because they haven't stopped doing it. That's it. Once you stop doing it, 
you're going to see that life is so much different than being under the influence all the time. And my, my alcoholism was to another level. Like it got to the point, my alcoholism was so bad. I used to be in the same exact room, like just sitting on the bed, like throwing up, you know, like wow. throwing up on the floor, you know, just, it did like, I would get up in the middle of the night. This is no lie. I would get up in the middle of the night, throw up and go right back to sleep. Wow. Get up the next day and start drinking again. It was wow. to the point like I was getting sick off of it. And if I didn't have it, I had to have it. So it's a completely like when you come from that life to and I went straight into this lifestyle, it's literally, literally an opposite world. It's literally like stepping into an entire new world. So I was two years sober yesterday. And Yay, congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I appreciate being here so much. Yesterday was like a different energy because I never had the appreciation for what I'm doing now like I did yesterday. So it's like I've never been this long without drinking. I've wow. never experienced life like this, this long. And did you feel like, because I know you would turn to raw foods, you turned to fruit. It totally mm -hmm. changed your life. Did you, because alcoholism can be such a big thing, such a hard thing for people to give up. Did you turn to any outside things to help you? Like, I know a lot of people go to AA, they go to meetings or they use other things to help them. Or was the fruit just changing your diet so powerful that you just stopped the urge to or desire to consume alcohol? Yeah. Yeah. I stopped drinking alcohol right away. Like I was, I stopped drinking alcohol and eating meat. So right away, I felt better, like right away. So what I did is I went into this program of drinking juice. You know what I'm saying? The juice kind of replaced the alcohol because mm -hmm. I was drinking it every single night. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I didn't know, I didn't care about nothing else as long as I could stay off that alcohol. So the longest previous that I've been off alcohol was seven months. So I started drinking when I was 18 and now I'm 38. And the longest I had ever stopped was seven months. Wow. So and do you think you'll go back? No, no, no. And you know what though? I feel like real talk. I feel so secure in where I'm at now. Like, I feel like I could go have a drink and not have a problem. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it, but I feel like that. You know what I'm saying? Like alcohol don't serve me no purpose. Like me too. I've done all the alcohol I can do, you know, yeah. I've done it all. So I'm not going to ever, ever, ever go back to that. Like, it's no reason to, it's like, I know what my downfall in life was. And since that, that was the one decision that I made to stop. I mean, to uh, change mm -hmm. and it changed my life forever. Forever. Look at you. One of the biggest <laughs> transformations I've ever seen. And I know a lot of people like to consume alcohol in moderation and they think, well, mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with it. I just consume it now and then. And I'm all for just do what makes you happy. If it's not causing problem, like do what makes you happy for me. Like, I think it's toxic, even in small amounts. Do you think that, or do you think like in moderation, it's okay? It depends. Like I know a lot of people who drink alcohol who handle it pretty well, but I know a lot of people who drink alcohol who don't think they drink a lot of alcohol. Mm -hmm. So it's like a, it's a thin line. I don't personally think it's needed. I think once you live without it, you see that you don't need it. So um, yeah. I don't have nothing against nobody having a drink though, but like yeah. for me, like for like my significant other or something to be drinking, that's a no, no. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I don't, I don't want it around me or like in my vicinity. You know what I'm saying? But I don't have nothing like somebody going out. I don't even go to social gatherings, though. Mm -hmm. I don't even go to where people drink at. Me too. So, but you smell like, it. Like, I smell it. I was around some people drinking last month. And now that I don't drink, I literally, like, smell it coming off the pores. Even, like, hours after they stop drinking. I think because it's just toxic and wants out of you, right? Mm-hmm. Were you, yeah. like, a complete alcoholic, though? Yeah, I didn't think I was like I was a functioning alcoholic. My background is real estate. So I used to do real estate before I did like YouTube full time. Mm. And so I was drinking every night, like a bottle of wine, sometimes two bottles of wine, barbecuing and drinking every night. And I love mm. beer too. I drank beer or wine like every night for my 20s into my early 30s until I went raw. And I don't even think about it now. But I used to be one of those people that would see alcoholics even though I kind of was one, but I used to see like heavier alcoholics who would maybe do really damaging things when they would drink. And mm -hmm. I would think, oh, it sucks for them. Like they can't drink. Like I used to literally think like your life would suck without <laughs> alcohol. So yeah. like we're here to show people it's so much better without it. Right. And if there's somebody watching, because I know people do comment on my channel, like sometimes 
that they can't give up the alcohol or they can't give up the coffee, but like they want to. Like, do you have advice yeah. for somebody watching who maybe like they want to give up those habits, but they literally feel like they can't? Because you have, right? You probably thought maybe in the past, like you couldn't give it up or didn't want to. Mm -hmm. You got to want to. You got to want to. Like, ain't no other. Like, one thing about me, I'm I'm real with myself. Like, I, I didn't want to ever stop drinking for real. I, like, it was like, it was like my safe haven. So you really got to come to a point in your life where you got to really want to stop drinking. Drinking got to be causing you some type of issue or problem. Because mm -hmm. if it's not, you're not going to stop. So, but mine, like for me, if you on the level of alcoholism that I was on, like grown, you a grown man, right? And you're not taking care of your responsibilities. Like I used to come home, real talk, with women that I didn't know. Like I just meet women off the street randomly, you know, being drunk, bring them home. My kids are being here with nothing to eat all day long. And then here I come, I throw them some McDonald's, come home, lay down, go to sleep, miss work. You know, it was like, it was so chaotic, so chaotic. miserable. And that's why a lot of people don't relate to the alcoholism. Like I know alcoholism on certain levels. So when people come to me, it's hard to lie to me about what you're doing. Because even just sitting around drinking alcohol by yourself, drinking beer every night after work or something is alcoholism. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if you're not causing other people damage or nothing like so. But, but my alcoholism was like hurting relationships. I was, I was hurting both of my baby mamas. I was cussing them out every night, making them feel insecure. Then even with my like the, my friends and my peers, people who stopped wanting to be around me. Like when they see me coming, they're like, here come Bobby. My mom used to call me and be like, like, say I go to a, a, a event or a gathering. She would call me and be like, you better not come in here drunk. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, you better not come over here drunk. So you got to really, really want to stop. You do. That's it. If you if you suffering from like severe alcoholism, you know mm -hmm. it because we know what we doing. We are adults. You know what you do every day. You know how you feel. You know when you getting up feeling bad. You know when, the, when you get up, your world spinning, your head spinning. You don't know what you did the night before and all that. You got to want to stop. Mm -hmm. that's, a that's what I, I wanted to stop and I really really wanted to feel better and once I started feeling better I'm like it's no way I'm not gonna feel like this yeah and do you think if people have like one or two a day they're like oh I don't I just like to have a couple a day but they kind of have to like you see they're in the habit of having to have like one or two a day and they've done that yeah. for years do you yeah. think that's an alcoholic if they're not like not getting drunk but they have to have like one or two drinks a day I don't, I don't think that's an alcoholic. That's an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. an alcoholic. I if think you so gotta, too. Yeah. If you got to have a beer or two every single night, you're an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you don't have to be getting drunk to be an alcoholic. Yeah. And that's a misconception too. So it's levels to everything in life. You know what I mean? Like I was at the level of alcoholism that you never want to get to. Like you never want to see nobody at the where where you kind of get into the stage where your body gets dependent on it. You know what I mean? Like if you don't have it, you will feel it. You can your body start to shake in, you will sweat. You all you can do is think about it. That's severe alcoholism. But just having a casual drink, what you think is casual every single night, and you get into a routine and consistency of that, that's alcoholism. Cause now you're dependent on it to have a good time, to relax to take you out of your, your uh, natural state. Yeah. And how yeah. would you say your life has changed as a result of giving up alcohol? Giving up alcohol has changed my existence on the earth. Not like my, everything about my life has changed. Everything, my appreciation for life, the way I view life, my perspective, the way I feel about it, the way I feel about other people, the way I treat other people, the way I take heed to things, the way I'm learning, the way I'm, um, uh, succeeding the way my notoriety is gained, the way my money is gained. I don't even work for nobody no more. Everything in life has changed. That's why I made a video the other day. I said, you got to make one decision. It's one decision in every single person's life right now that they know they have to make that they haven't made. I don't care what the, my decision was drinking. Some of the people's decision is a job. Or some people's decision is leaving a friend behind or a spouse or something. You know, you are the most important thing on the planet. So when you put yourself first, you will see a difference in life. Your view of life is going to change because now you see what's more important. You've been putting other people first. That's why I was an alcoholic. 
because I wasn't putting myself first. I didn't care about myself. So mm. now that I put myself at the center and everything re re evolves, ar revolves around me, that's how it's supposed to go. They got us not want, they got you not wanting to be self-centered because you got to look out for others so much, but you can't help others until you self-centered. Now I'm helping others. The fact that I put myself at the center, now I'm helping other people. Mm -hmm. Before, when I was selfish and didn't care about life or others, I couldn't help nobody because I wasn't helping myself. Mm -hmm. So that's the perspective I have now. So if you're an alcoholic, deal with it. The, deal with the fact that you're an alcoholic, which is the knowing, because you know better than everybody else know. Even the people who think you're an alcoholic, you know better than and you probably felt so bad before all the time, right? Because when you're drinking, it just makes you do things. You're not connected to your higher self like you usually are. It makes you do these things you wouldn't normally do. Contact people you would normally contact. Maybe post things you would normally post. Go out to places you would never normally go. And I feel like a lot of bad things can happen. Whereas when you're eating a clean, healthy lifestyle, like free of all those addictions, you don't have those moments of like shame, like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Or like feeling that anxiety in yourself because you did things that you wish you didn't do because that's not your true self, right? Mm -mm, mm -mm. <clears throat> like Jillian, for real, if I told you some of the things I've done to people, you wouldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. Like real talk, like, and that's the thing about like, right now you only know what you see. Mm -hmm. So, which is a good thing. And that's the thing about changing face. That's why you get the transformation and overcoming things like that. The things that I used to do to people, and being at this level of life now is it's like, I don't want you to know that person. Yeah. You know me what I mean? Too. I don't want me you too. to know the Yeah, I don't want you to know the things I used to do. That's me why <laughs> the people say you forget where you came from. No, I don't ever forget, even though I try. Mm -hmm. I try. But it's always reminders around you. You know what I'm saying? So life, the life, the difference in life is that I'm a better person. I'm a better human being. Now, I know it. I know mm -hmm. I'm a better person. I don't even like, like energy. I can feel negativity. Like I can feel it like from a mile away. People, even the most negative people I know, right? This is no lie. When they come around me, they are the best people. Wow. It's insane. Like some of the people that I used to have like real beef with and people that used to so-called hate me. Like when they come, my baby mama told me, she said, you know, it's so crazy that like she said my physical because I've hit her before being drunk mm -hmm. and I mentally abused her like to the to the 10 to the 10 X. And she said, it's crazy how my physical and mental abuser has now become my inspiration. Wow, that's insane. I love it's insane. it. And it may and I and I, I, you know, I almost cried that night. I did cry that night. Because I'd never even thought she would even respect me. Even like I couldn't even ask her to respect me. You know what I mean? So for now, for us to be on good terms, good communication, like now she's doing making changes based off my lifestyle. It's like that's that's how life is. Yeah. And I think all a lot of your other relationships have changed too, right? Has your circle changed? I know if like people are watching and they still drink, they might think like, cause I know I used to think that, well, all my friends, that's how we connect, right? We go out for yeah. wine and pizza, beer and burgers, whatever. So did you go through a period of like, you know, th there can be a lonely period before you get your new group of friends? Yeah. Everybody, yeah. Mm -hmm. everybody, like only every single, I cut off every single person I dealt with. Mm. Except one person, which is my friend Fred. Like, other than that, I cut off every person because what happened is that's what you learn that your associations with people and your bonds with people are not bonds. They're associations by alcoholism, drugs. Cause I was a drug addict too. That's a key component that's missing here. I was an alcoholic and a drug addict. Wow. Like, I did ecstasy every single night, marijuana. Every I was night? Every wow, night, wow, like it got wow, to the wow. point. It got to the point. I was doing ecstasy just to go to work. Wow! Stop. I <laughs> promise you. I st I was still doing ecstasy after I stopped drinking. This so, is crazy. Wow. Yeah, I stopped no drinking way. and I was still doing ecstasy for like two or three months because I remember going to work telling the girl that I was doing ecstasy with every night. Like, 
I was like, I told her, I was like, look, I got to, I stopped drinking. I got to stop doing this because I wouldn't get no sleep. Like, and when and you it must be expensive, right? To be drinking and doing ecstasy every day. I mean, I never bought ecstasy. It's one thing I never did, but I'm going to guess this is probably pretty expensive now. It, it, it was, it's not, a, it's, it's, every drug is expensive when you're doing it every <laughs> night. So, and it's not just the financial expense. It's the expense of your whole body and life, right? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. So I was smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. I didn't stop smoking cigarettes till June of 2022. So it was like a, everything just kind of fell off. So everything in my life, every relationship in my life has changed. Like I only deal with people who literally take care of themselves. Like people call me and they know what they calling me for. You know what I'm saying? Like the level of respect you get when you take care of yourself at this level is phenomenal. It's like, you wouldn't trade it in for nothing. Like the way people look at me and my transformation now, you can't help but to respect it. No, that's a fact. You know, it's kind of hard to like when I come around and I was just the example two years ago of who not to be. You must like, literally be a totally different person. Like imagine I'd had you on then versus now, like three years ago, it would be a totally different person we're talking to, right? Totally different. In, in physical too, though, like I was almost 300 pounds. Wow. You know, eating trash like every night. I used to come home from work drunk, but I would get two beers or two or three beers every morning. Like, and this before, because the, the, before the liquor store opened at nine, you can only buy beer. So I would buy the beer, come home, <laughs> put like a, a family size meatloaf in the oven or something. Oh and I would God. eat it. <laughs> I'd be at the stove eating it drunk and just crazy. And it was, that's, that was life. Like, good thing you're still here. Like, with everything yeah. you're telling me, like, the odds are maybe something could happen to you and you'd be, you know, on the other side right now. So, like, where do you think you'd be if you didn't take this path? And I can't remember, like, I want to talk about food and stuff in a minute, too. But, like, how did you find this path? Like, what was it that made, like, did you hit a rock bottom? I can't remember if we talked about it in the other videos. Like, what was it that was like, okay, mm. I got to stop this. I'm going to turn to fruit. What happened was in two, I, I tried to live this lifestyle in 2012 i had been knowing about fruitarianism since then so i went like two months of like just eating all fruits and like losing weight and stuff and feeling good but what happened is i met my son's mother and we started you know kicking it and hanging out and stuff and then i fell back into the trap of that lifestyle for 10 years <laughs> you know no like, it happens though like yeah, that right yeah, yeah for real and it was like a downward spiral and just commotion and chaos for like 10 years straight. And um, what happened was I saw when I knew, when I got back online, like even be, when I was drunk and stuff, I used to see Yaki and, and all these people online. And I used to be like, man, I know what they do and I know how they live and I know what to do. So when I decided to stop drinking, I knew what to do to stop. I knew to get back into this lifestyle because I was eager to. I always wanted to be a fruitarian, always, since I learned about it. So yeah, I knew what to do. I just wasn't doing it. So yeah, everything is like, the reason why this is happening is because it's supposed to be happening. Like I knew better the entire time I was in a drunken state. I used to be at the bars and at restaurants drunk telling people like, you know, we are supposed to be eating better than this. And you know, and they used to be like, why don't yeah. you practice what you preach then? <laughs> so yeah. nobody, <laughs> nobody would listen to me because I was living the same way they were. So as soon as that's why I said, as soon as I stopped drinking, people knew that something was going to happen because I used to happened, tell people, all right. oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. We just and we just getting started. You know what I mean? Like the this lifestyle for anybody out there who's struggling with alcoholism, drug addiction, anything you struggling with, getting consistent in this lifestyle is going to show you that you really wasn't struggling. It's self-inflicted. Everything, everything, the, life is not struggle. It's not. Life is good. Life is, everything about life is good. So you just have to get on that side of life and start eating life and, and being a part of it. And you're going to see. So if you're struggling with something, start putting life inside you. That's like simply start there, like going to the grocery store finding out more life, like seeing more life. I don't care if you just go in there and go to the fruit section more and just go around there and walk around, start absorbing life and energy. Mm -hmm. And with the food. Okay. I know food can be such a big addiction for people too. 
and you were addicted to stuff before, right? So like, take us through how did you used to eat and like how that made you feel versus what you eat now and how that makes you feel. Mm, I ate like trash, you know, mm -hmm. trash, mm -hmm. like complete trash. Like the last time I remember when I was drinking, me and my friend was sitting in the house right before Super Bowl, right after Super Bowl Sunday. I ordered like $50 worth of KFC, wow. you know, mm -hmm. we sitting there eating, drinking. That was every night, DoorDash, um, like I said, family size meals, uh, processed meats and all of that. I was, like I said, I was 268 pounds. So I ate trash, like it didn't care. So when I stopped, I, once I started losing weight, it's when mm -hmm. I start noticing how, that I felt better. Like, I don't know if it went hand in hand. Like when, as soon as I started noticing I, I lost 30 pounds, I was like, man, like I started feeling better. Like my clothes was a little looser. So the, the food, what happens is the juicing is what rejuvenated me. I didn't mm -hmm. like eating fruit. I didn't like eating fruit. The only fruit right now that I really like eating are apples and uh, watermelon. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I don't like to eat fruit. So I juice a lot of fruit and I get through the lifestyle the best way I can. So I'm learning the lifestyle as I'm teaching it. Because one thing about me is I want to live this way. You know what I mean? Like you, like you mm -hmm. cannot be in this lifestyle. If you don't want to live this way. You have to want yeah. to be like, so me not liking to eat fruits is me. Now I'm learning to. So now I'm starting to like to eat more. Like I didn't I used to like to eat apples. Now I can mm -hmm. sit here and eat a bag of apples with no problem. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's a process. Everything in life involves a process information. It comes in format. So you have to get in something and know that you in the process. So I like I tell my clients all the time, if you know you're starting a journey, right? You're going on a journey. And a lot of people try to determine their journey. I want to be here in six months. I want to be there in eight months. Stop that too. Because mm -hmm. you're going to be exactly where you don't want to be. So just go for the ride. So if you know you're on a journey, you know that journey involves a process. You know the process involves coming in and out. So one day you go do good. For two weeks, you might do good, but you're going to come back out of that process and you might do something outside of it. If you know that that's a part of the process, why don't you just embrace that and try to figure that part out instead of every time you step out the process, say, what's wrong with me? Mm -hmm. what's, why can't I get this? Like, it's nothing wrong with you. That's just a part of the process. Mm -hmm. Two or three years from now, you might have the process figured out. True. You know, so that's how I am with my approach. Like with the fruit eating, I fruit up, I get up and juice up every single day, no matter what happened the previous day. That's just what I do. You got to build the routine. So that's how I got into it. Like, I just made sure I was drinking juice. I don't care if I took an ecstasy pill. I don't care if I took the ecstasy pill with the fresh made juice. Mm -hmm. I made sure I <laughs> yeah. drank the juice. And I'm yeah. not telling anybody. That's how I started. Mm -hmm. So I'm a by any means person. So by any means, I wanted to stop eating meat and stop drinking alcohol. So I would come home and eat ramen noodles, like two packs of them, just to stop so I wouldn't eat no meat. So and it got me to the point I'm at now. Yeah, because it's a process, right? It's and it's a yeah. different process for everyone. So, like, yeah. I know you said after you lost about thirty pounds, you started to feel good. So, how mm -hmm. long was that? How long was your process before between starting and being like, "Wow, I feel really good." So, I stopped drinking and eating meat in February two thousand twenty-two. By May of that year, I was mm -hmm. I had lost thirty pounds. So, mm -hmm. from from April, no, from uh, February to May. I lost 30 pounds. Then in May, I lost another 21 pounds. Wow. That month. So I had lost 50 pounds from February to June. Wow. And once I seen that I was capable of doing that, because I didn't know. I didn't know. That's the beauty about this journey. You do not know until you start it. The most, no matter where you at, I know people right now, like my sister, for instance, she said, Bob, I don't know where to start. I don't know where to start. So what she did is she went to start buying frozen fruit and throwing it in a blender with water. That's it. That's where she started at every morning. She lost like, and then she she got better and better and started adding a few things and this and that. But she ended up losing like 60 pounds in three months. Wow. 
What if people are like, well, this is so expensive though. I can't afford it. What do you have to say to that? How does the cost compare from like your old lifestyle to now? It's less expensive. It's less expensive. Like I told you, I spent $50 on DoorDash. Mm -hmm. you, you heard when I said that. So think mm -hmm. about this. That's somebody who lying to themselves. That's somebody who don't want to put the work in. Somebody who don't want to research prices and what they True. supposed to eat and how much things going to cost because you're lying to yourself. If you go to McDonald's and spend $60 in one week for the family, one time a week, that's so much fruit. That's so much fruit. That's three days of fruit for your family. So we got to get in tune. That's a, we, that's that's just a, a cop out. I don't accept that answer from nobody because if you truly hungry and you want something to eat, you can go get three apples and feel satisfied. Mm -hmm. Depending on your size and how you want you eat, but I don't care who you are. It's cheaper to eat a bag of apples than it is a chicken chicken meal from Popeye's. Yeah, true. And I know like Popeye's, a lot of these foods, like they're made to be addictive, right? Mm -hmm. Like we get addicted to these foods. And even now, like I know you've been like two years clean off these foods, off the alcohol, off the drugs. Do you still miss them sometimes? And what do you think like the keys have been for you for staying off them that long? Because I know like people are watching, they might still be struggling with like some of their food addictions. Of course, I'm, 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 I miss them all the time. And then, so I got, I got custody of my son now and wow. he moved in, he obese, you know, and I'm dealing with that. Like, that's one of the struggles that I'd really deal with. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I, I miss the food all the time, all the time. What happens is what I did 108 days of watermelon. You interviewed me for that. Mm -hmm. And I told you after that, I had ate some cooked food for about a week and I don't like the difference. I don't like the difference. You're not going to be able to want to sustain the energy unless you sustain it. You know what I'm saying? So you have to, mm -hmm. the watermelon washout, the 108 days of watermelon, what it did for me is it gave me a reference point of what I'm capable of and how high I was off a of natural life. Mm -hmm. So I said, every time I feel lower than that, I go back to that reference point because you now it's something you did. It's something you know. So when you start living this way, that's the only way you're going to understand. That's why I can't explain certain, certain things that can't be explained. Mm -hmm. It's something that's, that you have to be, that has to be experienced. So you would know how good you feel and how you want to keep feeling. A lot of people say, man, I ate fruits for three days. And it's the best I ever felt. Or I ate fruits for a week. and It's the best I ever felt. If this is the best you ever felt in your life, then why you stop? Mm hmm. So that means you got some issues and things to figure out outside of how you feel. Yeah. You know, and how do you how do you eat currently? Like, what does a whole typical day look like right now? Uh, right now, I'm drinking water because I was too lazy today to drink mm -hmm. to make juice before this interview. But what I do is I'm on like day number eight, I think, of all apple juice. Wow. No way. Yeah. So what I do, I remember one time you and I interviewed and you said like you do like you did like a three day juice cleanse. Yeah. And I told you, if you can do things like that, then you high level. If you can say, I'm a, I, even if you ate like trash for a weekend and you say, I'm going to do three days of juice real quick to cleanse out. That's high level. Yeah. Three days on all juice. So when I do stuff like this, it's, I don't have no consistency in this lifestyle. I'm all over the place. One, like I might get up. <laughs> I love it. For real. I might get up and say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to have all smoothies today, but end up eating apples and drinking juice all day. So. It's, it's really tough to build consistency in this unless you've been doing it for a long time. And like, I just love, like, I love your honesty. I love just how open and transparent you are about everything. Yeah. I mean, why not? You know, because if you want people to truly succeed, you got to show them what it really is. Mm -hmm. And that's why I've been on like the war versus cooked food and raw food. And I, you know, I've been doing the, 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 the interviews and stuff. And I had Shane Sterling and Matt Fu and these guys on mm -hmm. who advocate for raw food. Mm -hmm. And I asked these guys, I said, so when the last time you had cooked food? And they, both of them said like a week ago. Wow. So I'm like, we got it. Like, yeah. So, but the war is on cooked food. So, mm -hmm. but it's not. So I got this campaign that I'm doing where we got this group food up till five that I'm doing. And what I'm doing is I'm showing people there's no difference between cooked food and raw food. It's just food. Mm -hmm. You got to stop separating these things and acting like raw eaters are better than these eaters. I and agree. Better than that eater. 
but and just eat the real food right even if it's real cooked food. it's like yes. you said so you're doing like the fruit till five and then they can eat like a cooked meal but like eat the real food like go for yeah. like some beans and rice and potatoes or sweet potatoes or broccoli rather than like going to popeyes or going to mcdonald's right indeed indeed yeah. so if you live in a if you eating whole food plant-based you know what i mean like you're doing better you're doing a lot better you're doing actually living kind of optimal Mm -hmm. A lot of people who just stop True. eating animal products and all that. If you eating cooked veggies and stuff like that, who, who cares? Yeah, I agree. life is good. That's what those things are for. But somebody is manipulating us and trying to divide us. And that's what happened like in every community. Yeah. So that's why I stopped doing that. Because even though I'm a fruitarian, I, I advocate for fruit eating. Don't get me wrong. I think fruit based living is the best, most optimal way of living. But I just, there's a thousand ways to die and there's a thousand ways to live. So mm -hmm. this is not the best way to live for everybody. It is for me. So one thing I like is uh, I interview Orville Douglas and I know you have two shots out to mm -hmm. Orville, the OG mm -hmm. interview. Him, and I'm glad he said something in that interview. He said, if you 70 percent fruit, then you're a fruitarian. Mm -hmm. Now, you know what I, I mean? So. Yeah, yeah, I, I think with too. even raw vegans, I think if you're like 70, 80 percent, like to me, if you're eating 80 percent raw, 85, I consider that like a raw vegan, too. It's like, Indeed. Yeah. yeah, why not? Like I would if you 55 percent raw, you mostly raw, aren't you? Yeah. And I'm I with mean, you. Like, like these wars we see even within our own community of people knocking people for this and that. I'm just like, come on, really? Like we're yeah. all out here trying to spread a good message. There's yeah. just so much negativity to that. And I'm with you on being like. I'm all for not labeling cooked food bad at all. Like whole food plant-based, you see people totally heal and thrive just eating whole food plant-based, even if it's cooked. Indeed. And my daughter, she's 11. So she used to eat everything and eat a lot of crap. And mm -hmm. I never in a million years thought that would change. But just one day, I don't know, like she heard a couple of my interviews or stuff I was listening to. And then like overnight, she went whole food plant-based. And mm. she's not all raw, but she's whole food plant based. And I've seen a huge transformation in her and it's just been amazing. So I I agree. Like we have to, yeah, be more supportive yeah. of each other and stop those wars, you know? And that's just, yeah. Indeed, because a lot of the times that deter people away from entering the lifestyle because it's too much information. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's too much. So what we doing in April is we simplifying it. You eat it's fruit up till five o'clock. I think it's so simple. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, it's so simple because what else is it like? Uh, there's a concept they have raw till four. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure everybody familiar with that. But yeah. food up till five, raw till four still is a lot. It's a lot. It leaves a lot on the table. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So fruit up till five is a concept to where you nothing but fruit till five o'clock in any form, though. You can mm -hmm. juice it, smoothies, uh, eat it raw. But after that, you can have cooked meals. You can have raw meals. You can have, you can have such a, sometimes you can have a bad meal. Mm -hmm. You and know people what I still mean? have transformations doing that, yeah. right? And totally change their lives for the it's better. Okay. It's okay. So that's the narrative we're trying to create with people. Like yeah. in order to get people to eat better, you got to make people want to eat better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So enforcing one type of way of eating on somebody is not the way to go. And I had to learn that. I came True. in advocating nothing but fruit. And if you're not eating fruit, you're not doing something right. Mm -hmm. So, but <laughs> yeah. one thing about me is I take heed to things. I, I'm willing to change because I'm, I love growth. You know what I mean? And who, who if you don't change, you're not going to grow. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I look at the scope of the, uh, of the community and I say, this is not needed. Like, like pushing just only fruit on people is not needed. Mm -hmm. More fruit is needed. Mm -hmm. That's simple. That's a simple approach to getting people to eat better in life. So that's where I'm at now. Like it's a big change from every, every time you see me, I'm going to be growing. Mm -hmm. No, I know. Every, I can tell even time. from when I interview you from the last time to that time, I noticed huge changes. Yeah, and I think I'm like part of like, growing and changing like this we want to follow like the right people and inspiring people spiritual people positive people so mm -hmm. you've had a really successful two-year journey now who have maybe been like some key people that have helped you grow help you stay on track inspired you and things like that or key books like anything that's really been like wow this really helped me along the way oh yeah a lot of people a lot of the community that's one thing about this community like 
I, I, the community gets so much of a like a bad rep in some places because of that division. Mm -hmm. But I've met some tremendous people along the way, and they all different. They all believe mm -hmm. in what they believe in. But like uh, Kev Ramon, Kev Ramon, that's my brother. Uh, me and his journey in the summertime was like life changing. We created a bond. Uh, Yaki Awaken. I've like he become like a family member to me. Lachey Taylor. I remember you interview her. Yeah. She. He's phenomenal. Me and her have developed a relationship to where like we talk about a lot of things and she helped me with a lot of creativity behind the scenes. I have a new coach, Dr. Michelle Knights. She is so phenomenal. That's why my a wow. lot of my change that I just came out with, because I'm I'm stop I'm starting to stop cursing and you know, bashing. I'm trying people. to stop that too. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm, I curse a lot it, too. Not in tough. my videos. <laughs> but in my life, I do. That's crazy. But, so yeah. I would never know that. I would never know that. Yeah, I try to keep it off here. I think YouTube's really tightened up on the swearing too. So I spent, and it's just, but I do a lot, but I'm trying to cut it back. Yeah, it's, it's negative, tough. right? It's negative. Yeah. It's a, it's a bad habit. It's not, it's not positive. Yeah. And no matter, and I know, and like, you know, I'm like, I'm one of them truth conspiracy guys. I get into that stuff. You know what I mean? So I, 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 it's hard for me to stop doing certain things, but if you not, like I said, willing to change, you're not going to grow. So in order for me to help more people, I've started to change my ways to say, hey, look, you know, you don't have to be exactly like me because I learned that a lot from a lot of people around me that they want to be just like me. They want to do it just like that. And you don't have mm -hmm. to. And I'm not perfect. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? I got my flaws, too. And transparency is one thing, but privacy is another. You know what I'm saying? So when the last time you heard somebody say, respect my privacy, you don't even mm -hmm. hear that no more. You know, like you don't even <laughs> yeah. hear respect my privacy no more. It's all about be more transparent. True. So you got to have some privacy in your life. You know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't got to know everything you're going through. True. Because that's what makes me stronger, that I have privacy. I have a life outside the internet. Yeah. You know I mean? Like you, you don't got to know everything I go through. Yeah, like, I gotta win some wars on my own still. I yeah. don't go to the internet for support for everything. So me too. That's and that's, okay. So you hired a coach. Is that what you said? And you, I yeah. want to talk in a second too, because like through this journey, you've become really successful. I feel like you're in your passion. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you're in your purpose now? Do you feel that? Like I truly feel that now. Like I'm in my purpose, and I never had this sort of feeling or connection before I got healthy. I never mm -hmm. had it. it. Didn't exist to me. It wasn't something I felt like. Is that the case for you too? Did you feel oh, yeah. like you were in your purpose with things before? Or is this like new to you too, as you've had this journey? No, I, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is what I'm supposed to be doing because it's what I want to do now. Like I, when I quit my job and I tell people all the time in, in June, I quit my job. I was a produce clerk at a grocery store. Mm -hmm. And that's like, it's to a lot of people. That's not high risk. It's not a high risk to me. It's not even high risk, but I didn't know that until I left. Yeah. Before I left there, I was thinking like, man, what am I going to do? How I'm going to pay this? How I'm going to do that? Mm -hmm. So it's a mindset. My coach, Dr. Michelle Knights, she definitely changed my approach to a lot of things. Because one thing about it is you can't help people if you acting like you don't want to help them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If people can't come to you for help, they're not going to. So I want to let people know that I want you to experience this lifestyle. Like I really do. People who like now I watch my old videos and how miserable I was and stuff. And I'd be like, man, like, I know it's people out there feeling like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And, and for me to feel like this, I feel selfish in a way to not express my joy for how I'm living. Like, it ain't about what you got. It ain't about who you know. It ain't about how popular you are, how many followers you got. It's about how good you feel about yourself. Mm. That's it. And when you, when you can grab that concept of life, life get 10x better. Like it really do. Like I enjoy doing this. Like I'm enjoying this conversation. Like I appreciate being here. You know what I mean? Like I appreciate the people I got in my life. And that's the, 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 I didn't even know I needed a coach. I was one of those people like, I don't need no coach. Who going to coach me? Like, but then when I got one, it's like, you get a new perspective. Like it's okay to get coached and guided by people who know better than you. Mm -hmm. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay yeah. to pay for help. It's okay for that. It's okay. If and if you, you get the right coach, it'll probably, even though you're paying for it, probably a great investment because you're probably going to get a better return and learn how to become better and then work on your personal development. And like Jim Rohn says, work harder on yourself than you do your job. 
And then yeah. that leads to more money anyway. So it's a good Indeed. investment, right? Yeah. And they teach you how to take, how to help others. So I've taken people under my wing already. Already in a short time, I'm teaching people how to uh, be better online, how to use certain websites. And it's like instantly you start helping others. Service sales is a service. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have something that can help someone and you can offer them some help and sell it to them, that's a service to humanity. Yeah. You okay. Know? So if somebody's watching and they're, they want your help, like mm -hmm. what exactly services do you offer? Like how can you help? What type of thing do you focus on? If somebody's watching, like, I think you have a group, right? So what are yeah. your offerings? And I'll link them below too. Oh, oh D and D. So right now we got the uh, fruit up till five with me, Dr. Michelle Knights and Aline Habib is on there too. Mm -hmm. Um, She's uh, we all came together to run this challenge. We got going on in April called Fruit Up Till Five. It's only a hundred dollars to get in. We got a VIP for only two ninety seven, and you get an exclusive package with that. So we offering that to get people more into the lifestyle. Right now, that's exactly what I'm offering. I do personal coaching too, though. Yeah. Um, you can you can get get with me on any platform, inbox me or message me or email me at fruitup13 at gmail. I'm doing personal coaching. We got, I had an accelerator program, three week program that introduces people into learning how to lose 25 pounds in 10 days. Wow. It's called the consistency accelerator program. I just ran that in February. It went really well. I'm gonna have some results coming from that and I'm gonna probably be running that back. So just message me or inbox me. We got so many different opportunities to get the people right this year. And that's what I've been focusing on, like group help. And, and, and if you need that, that white glove treatment where like you get your hand held and get shown the ropes about building consistency and building discipline. I do that too. Yeah. And it's great. I can't remember if I just said this or not before this, but I feel like all this started with the food, right? All this started oh, yeah. with you changing how you ate, like all yeah. of it. It's made you so much more creative, right? Too. And so much more productive. Yeah. Cause I got yeah. time now. I got the time that you, one thing about you, when you're not eating and focus on food and cooking and, socializing because a lot of your socializing comes over eating and drinking mm -hmm. you know what i mean so i don't do none of that i don't go nowhere if i do it to the market you know what i mean like I, I don't talk to a whole lot of people except the people online my life is online now and if you look at it people think online living is bad but really don't we all live online now mm -hmm. we don't do. we get all of our information online so Mm -hmm. And like, even in your space, like your space has created so much information online. Mm -hmm. All I hear is I heard you on Jillian Berry. I heard you on Jillian mm -hmm. Berry. So I love you it. You know that you serving your purpose. And you, mm -hmm. when you get up and love doing this and don't mind doing it, you know, you serving your purpose. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I love helping people who want to help themselves. Mm -hmm. And you've really helped yourself. And I know for me, like before I went to raw foods in 2016, like I read something by Dr. Sebi and I went raw. And it reversed all my health problems. I had panic attacks, digestive problems, even like blood in my stool, major fatigue, back acne, like all kinds of issues happening. But for anybody who doesn't know, and I can't remember with you, I know you had excess weight, but did you have, and I had brain fog, all these things. Did you have other health problems you were suffering with before that oh, yeah. cleared up when you turned to raw food, to fruits? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I had uh, high blood pressure, sleep apnea, mm, that's um, right. severe acne. Um, I'm still clearing up my skin. Now I started doing herbs and now I'm doing this solution called a game herbal that I'm with my coach who, uh, turned me on to it is 21 herbs. And I've been taking it almost every day and life has completely changed. That's why I say I'm always willing to implement and do better. And if you not, if you're not willing to implement things that six, that you see people, uh, implementing that's successful then you're not going to change. Mm -hmm. So yes, I've overcome so many things. Like one thing a lot of men don't talk about that I, that I'm proud to have overcame is erectile dysfunction. Wow. You know what I mean? A lot. That's one of the topics that men really don't talk about and it plagues our community. Mm -hmm. And it's one of them topics that if you, if men were to be more honest, they could get more help. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's what I'm an advocate for that now, like uh, alcoholism, like I'm proud to have overcome those things to tell people how it feels to overcome them and how you can overcome them because yeah. life is not life not like that. Life is not not pleasing your woman. Life is not not like or being drunk all the time and eating bad foods and working real hard, getting beat down. That's not life.
Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you don't know that until you start living on this side of life where you start consuming it. So yeah. And I know yeah. some people are like, oh, you have to have a vice. I have to have like my smokes, my drinks or this. Do you have any vices or what do you say to that? Vice is like, I don't know what a vice is, but I still go back into some of the old habits of eating some rice or mm -hmm. something like, like, you know, like it's small things. Like I said the other day, I don't have no problems. A vice sound like a problem. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> uh, yeah. so uh, I, I, my problem, like getting up, arguing about cooked food and raw food. <laughs> or my problem oh, yeah. is my getting my son off of these foods, you know, because it's hard. My youngest daughter's it. on these foods, too. She just wants to eat everything. And it's hard at school. Like some of the moms literally bring like the worst candy, the worst crap right after school. They're like, here, Victoria. And if I'm like, no, don't eat it. It just causes more problems. So it's hard. It's hard when it's your kids, too. Sometimes I just have to like black it out or I get really stressed about it. I'm telling you, like my son, sometimes I get irritated when my son asks me for something to eat. Like he'll eat. In the break, yeah, eat breakfast, you know, mm -hmm. some, some bad breakfast foods, a turkey sausage sandwich or something. Mm -hmm. And then he'll come back two hours later, dad, I'm hungry. And I'm like, bro, I haven't even had a glass of water yet. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and it's like, you got, that's something that you got to learn how to deal with. Because uh, one person who taught me about that was Kev Ramon when he like, he said like, you can't really just force them off of it. Cause then you got to realize they drugs. You were on, yeah. you know? You got to let them go through the phases and just be the example and start implementing things here and there. Mm -hmm. And when you started implementing things and like you started like detoxing off everything, you, you know, the herbs, the juices, this and that. Do you feel like you fully detoxed the whole the old lifestyle? Do you think we ever fully detox? And like, how do we know when we're like detoxed and clean? I feel like, OK, that's a good question. The old lifestyle, in a sense. But you got to realize, like, even relationships and people that you used to deal with are a part of that lifestyle. So, mm -hmm. no, I would say 85 percent. I still got my little, you know, I still I still got that person in me. You know, he's still there. He still dwells. But I, I don't think it will. It's the, the control factor. Like when you control what you eat, you gain control over your life. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's one thing that's synonymous with controlling what you eat. So it's like now that the respect level, the things that I go through, I would say just to answer that question, 85 percent, I would say, is only because of the people that I still deal with mm -hmm. that are still on that lifestyle. I haven't given up on everyone. You know what I'm saying? Because even though I cut everybody off just to get into this mindset, now that I'm in this mindset, I go back and I talk to those people and help them a lot more. Mm -hmm. So I'm still influenced by certain things, but I'm to a level now where I can't be stopped. You know, life is good. When you come from the dark, like this is like, like this is easy. Yeah. This, this is like easy. dark to light. This yes. is really, you know, this is easy work. Like I, the way I like my, even like the way I look at women, my, my relationships with women, have changed so dramatically. Like I most like all the women I talk to feel like sisters now. You even see like when I talk to you, I'm like, how yeah. you doing sis? Like it, it feel like that. Like I don't yeah. even like women the same no more. Like I I love women. Like you know what I mean? With a like it's different. So everything in life has changed. Like see, it makes you realize everything changes when we change, right? Yeah. 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 It's really a perspective. It's really a mindset. And that's why they say, like, you can't change the world until you change yourself. That's a, for that's for real. That's, that's for, real. for real. The world really changed when you change yourself. And do you feel more confident and more like you have a better like sense of self-worth and confidence now versus? Oh, that? yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I am who I am. Like, I do what I do. I get up and do this. You know, one thing about me, I, that's why I show both the lifestyle a little bit, because it's fun. It's really, really fun living this way when you come from where I come from, like getting up, making juice every day and you like talking the lifestyle and telling people to eat fruits. There's nothing else I'd rather be doing. Nothing mm -hmm. like it's so fun and easy and I'm helping people. So I'm way more confident. I am that guy. Like I like people be talking to me. I'll be like, you know, I'm Bobby Smith. You don't know who you're talking to. Like, and, yeah. I, and that's the that's the that's what I've developed. It ain't well, people I never say, always like, been away. people feel about you. What if you're feeling amazing about yourself inside and out, like people feel pick on that and feel that about you, right? I stand up. I am. I'm I feel good. 
I'm doing good. I am good. Life is good. No, I don't even listen to negativity no more. Like I stop like mm -hmm. online, like on Facebook and stuff, like on comments and stuff. If it's negative, I just block it. That's good. I don't, yeah. Like, I, don't, I don't look at it no more or nothing. Like can't nobody stop what's coming. Mm -hmm. And we we putting in that work. I'm going to get better and better and better and better because we're going to help more and more and more people. Mm hmm. Well, That's this has this been amazing. I could talk to you all day. I love Indeed. having you on. You're just so real, so transparent, which I love. Thank you. And you literally do have one of the best stories I've ever seen. You're one of the best people I know. It's been such a transformation. And Thank I you. love it. I'm here for Thank it. You. Is there Thank anything you. else you want to share with the viewers right now that you feel called to say? And sure. let everybody know where they can find you. And I'll link everything down below. So go join Bobby's April Challenge, his group. Yes. I think you have a pretty big group on Facebook, right? Yes. Yes. Fruit Up with Bobby Smith on Facebook. We have about 24,000 members now. The Fruit Up with Bobby Smith YouTube is growing. I'm doing a whole lot of interviews with a whole lot of influential people in the community. Um, I'm trying to get like you, Jillian, you know? I feel and, like your YouTube will blow up for sure. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. trying to get it there. You know, it's about consistency and putting in the work. So uh, the uh, Instagram, Fruit Up 13, TikTok, Fruit Up 13, Bobby Smith on Facebook, Fruit Up Till 5 group, April 1st. That's going down. Uh, look out for a whole lot of stuff. The fruit up t-shirts and hoodies. I'm going to send you uh, some yeah, t-shirts. I would love uh, one. Yes. And a hoodie. I wear hoodies all the time at home. Definitely. I'll wear a definitely. For sure. I got you. So yeah, the fruit up, you can get with me for these. Uh, just inbox me. I'm sending them out myself. Like, like I said, thank you for having me on. Like your platform actually helped bring more eyes to what we got going on. So Good. that's why I appreciate what you're doing. Please keep doing what you're doing at the level. You, you love up. I see you out here. You inspiring. I be telling people all the time, like Jillian Berry is like the go to in the health community. If you want to go learn something and you want to get some information, you go to Jillian Berry page and you look at the high level individuals that she deal with. So I definitely appreciate you, sis. You doing your thing. You always doing your thing and keep doing it. Thanks. I love you. I love that. That's so sweet. You are awesome. Everybody go follow Bobby, all his Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, everything. Join the group, join the challenges, go support him and you could totally change your life. Indeed. And be sure to subscribe to this channel if you don't already. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. Thank you. Fruit up.